Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Glory to the living God. Heavenly Father, we thank you for a wonderful morning of fellowship. We ask your blessing upon us as we turn again to the scripture. Give guidance, O God, and blessing as we listen to the scripture that has given us. We ask this in Jesus' name we pray. Everybody say, Amen and Amen. Please be seated. Thank you, Gani and his team. Good morning, everyone. How are you today? All good. Are you ready for the message? <laughs> uh, in the book of uh, Acts chapter 18, we see the story of Paul planted a church among the Corinthians. The church at Corinth, established by the, the Apostle Paul, that church had many problems. Many problems. It is the most problematic church recorded in the New Testament. Example, spiritual superiority over one another, eating food offered to idols, abusing the Lord's Supper, lawsuit against one another, quarreling among believers. But the most serious problem in the current church that Paul had to deal with is about division among its members. Church is split. They are fighting among themselves. Today, within our own churches, there is always the threat of division and quarrels among our members. The reason why this topic is very serious because we need to learn how to resolve conflict the church because it brings dishonor to the name of the Lord Jesus Christ if we are fighting among ourselves. The enemy is not us. The enemy is who? Satan. Can you tell to your neighbor the enemy is Satan, not us? The topic today has to do with this very key issue. How do you change yourself completely? How do you transform yourself? The message today is very simple. Let the power of the Holy Spirit transform you. What is the message today? Transform you. Question. Is it possible to change your character without the power of the Holy Spirit? Yes or no? The Holy Spirit is very important to us because it changes our personality. But the question is, why there are Christians that even though their lives filled with church activity, even though they go to church every Sunday, they attend Bible study, they read the Bible, but they are not experiencing no spiritual fruit of the Holy Spirit. They are still remain angry, no love for others, unforgiving, joyless, even though they go to church or serving God. Why is this happening? What is the reason? Let's look at 1 Corinthians 2, 12, 14. Everybody read. What we have received is not the spirit of the world, but the spirit who is from God, so that we may understand 
what God has freely given us. This is what we speak not in words taught us by human wisdom, but in words taught by the Spirit explaining spiritual realities with Spirit taught words. The person without the Spirit does not accept the things that come from the Spirit of God, but considers them foolishness and cannot understand them because they are discerned only through the Spirit. Paul now begins by telling us the main problem, the main problem is us. So how do we change? We need the Holy Spirit. Everybody read. Verse 12. What we have received is the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit who is from God, so that we may understand what God has freely given us. The Apostle Paul introduces this important concept, the important truth that the Holy Spirit is given to us. What reason? We will understand the things of God. You know why it's so important to understand the things of God? Because in verse 14, tell us, everybody read, the person without the Spirit does not accept the things that come from the Spirit of God, but consider them foolishness and cannot understand them because they are discerned only through the Spirit. So the, a person without Spirit cannot accept. Spiritually, they don't understand, does not accept the things of God because he does not have the Holy Spirit. You can have all the education in the world and not understand the things of God. If you don't understand every passage in the Bible, it's not because your IQ is low, but because you don't have the Holy Spirit. Now, question, who is the Holy Spirit? Do you have any idea who is the Holy Spirit is? The Holy Spirit is not a physical being or not in material being. The Holy Spirit is a person who has divine attribute as God and the attribute of holiness. The Holy Spirit is the person of the triunity of God. The word trinity does not appear in the Bible, but the Bible teaches that there are three persons in one God. God the Father, God the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Spirit is God. God the Father is not the Son. God the Son, Jesus, is not the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is not the Father. They are different from others. So each one of them has a personality, but they are one. So now, what can you learn about the Holy Spirit? Jesus talks about the Holy Spirit and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to help you and be with you forever. So Jesus is now saying, I will ask the Father in heaven, and he will give you another helper. Two important words. The first word is another. In the Greek language, you have different words for another. One is called alos, which means another of exactly the same kind. For example, you say, I need another slice of cake. So you are talking about exactly the same type of cake. The other word of another is heteros, which means of a different kind. 
For example, you say, let's watch another movie. So you talk a watchi about watching different kind of movie. The one used by the writer of the Bible is the word alos. I'll give you another exactly of the same kind of me. So Jesus is saying, God will give you another helper exactly like me. That's the word of another, alos. The word advocate or helper is an important word. The word helper or advocate is the word parakletos, which means somebody alongside you. Not just to comfort you to you, he's your lawyer, he's your advocate, he's going to be with you forever. That's the word advocate or helper. Somebody to assist you, somebody to always be with you. Now, when you receive Jesus Christ into your life, who enters your life? The Holy Spirit. Now, if you, how many of you have invited and confessed Jesus to be your personal Lord and Savior? Can you raise your hands? Now, if you have invited Jesus to come into your life, where is Jesus right now? Who is that in your heart? The Holy Spirit. So, the Holy Spirit is exactly like Jesus, but he is distinct. I will show you another verse in John 16, 13. Notice the Holy Spirit is a person. But when he, the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all the truth. He will not speak of his own. He will speak only what he hears and he will tell you what is yet to come. That's why before Jesus was not in my life, I don't like reading the Bible. I'm not interested to a friend's invitation to go to church. I don't like to join a Bible study because I don't have the Holy Spirit. But once you have the Holy Spirit, He will guide you into all truth. He will not speak of His own initiative. Whatever He hears, He will speak. Back to 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14. The person without the Spirit does not accept the things that comes from the Spirit of God, but considers them foolishness and cannot understand them because they are discerned only through the Spirit. Can you imagine your life without the Holy Spirit? I'll show you a picture of a person without the Holy Spirit or the natural man. So this is your life. You are driving a car. A person without the Holy Spirit does not have Jesus. Jesus is outside your life. You may go to church. You may attend Bible study. But you don't have the Holy Spirit in your heart. Who is running yourself? Or who is running your life? Yourself. As a general rule, people who don't have the Holy Spirit have no internal conviction of sin. Spirit don't have a lasting joy. When circumstances are good, they are happy. But when circumstances are not good, they are unhappy. So this, are, this is a natural man. Without God's spirit, he's spiritually blind, he's spiritually dead. No presence of Christ living inside of him. He has no transformation into the image of Christ. The only one who can transform your life is the Holy Spirit. So you need the Holy Spirit to change you, 
Second type of person is spirit-filled Christian. So I'll show you a picture of a spirit-filled Christian. The spirit-filled Christian who is in control and who is driving your life. Jesus, where are you? Where are you? So you are no longer driving your life, but you are still inside the car. In your honest assessment, are you a carnal Christian or spiritual Christian? What is the important characteristic of a spiritual Christian? Let us look at 1 Corinthians 2.15 to 16. The person with the spirit makes judgment about all things, but such a person is not subject to merely human judgment. For who has known the mind of the Lord so as to instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. The word judgment is from the Greek word that implies you have discernment. You know how to analyze things and to come at the correct conclusion of the argument. Because you have the mind of Christ, you do not make decisions based on public opinion. You make decisions based on pub biblical truth or based on the message of the Bible. Let's read verse 16. Everybody read. No. What does it mean you have the mind of Christ? It simply means you are given the ability to see the things from God's word. The mind of Christ is the ability to see truth based on God's word in your life. Without the Holy Spirit, you cannot see the truth. And that's why you need the Holy Spirit. How can you have the mind of Christ? But we have the mind of Christ. But the question is, how can you have the mind of Christ? Let's read Romans 8.5. Those who live according to the flesh have their mindset on what the flesh desires. But those who live accordance, in accordance with the Spirit have their mindset on what the Spirit desires. In this text, Paul described two different mindset. He gives us an easy way to determine if your mind set on the things of the flesh or the things of the spirit. The word mind used by Paul is not the ordinary word mind. The word mind in the English dictionary means brain, mental capacity, intellectual. But this is not what Paul means. What he means is your thought, your thinking, your attitude, your character, and your desire. So we hear that there are two different mindsets. The mindset of the flesh and the mindset of the spirit. So you have to be careful what you have put in your mind. Because Satan can put able things in your mind. Believe it or not, your mind is so important thing. We can compare our mind to a garden. Your mind is like a garden and you are the gardener. A garden can be cultivated to grow plants or neglected. If your garden, you can plant with seed that will produce something good, or you allowed a garden to be grow 
with weeds. Meaning, your thoughts are the root of your words and action. You think godly thoughts and you produce godly action. You think evil thoughts and you produce evil actions. In other words, the harvest you get will be decided by the seed you put in the ground. If you plant bad seed, you harvest bad fruit. If you plant good seed, you harvest good fruit. The whole point is your thoughts are the seed. Whatever you put in your mind will reap after your own self. Therefore, in order to have the mind of Christ, the first thing that must change in your life will be the way you think. Your mind. The only way to have the mind of Christ is to have spiritual thoughts. And the only way you have spiritual thoughts are filled up your mind with the word of God. That's how you begin to change. You allow the Holy Spirit to transform you and renew your mind. Spiritual minded is not the same thing as being religious person. You may be extremely religious. You go to church every Sunday. You always come to Bible study, but not a spiritual mind. You may be a helpful person, very kind, and tender-hearted without being a spiritual mind. Who is the real Christian? Let's read Romans 8, 9. Whoever are not in the realm of the flesh, but are in the realm of the spirit, is indeed the spirit of God lives in you. And if anyone does not have the spirit of Christ, they do not belong to Christ. According to this verse, what are the different names of the Holy Spirit? Here are the different names of the Holy Spirit. Are not in the realm of the spirit place, but are, but are in the realm of the Spirit. So the name of the Holy Spirit is Spirit, capital S. What else? The Spirit of God. So another name for the Holy Spirit is the Spirit of God. And another name for the Holy Spirit is the Spirit of Christ. Now, with all those words being mentioned, who is a Christian according to this verse? Who? We can say that the person in whom the Spirit of God abides is a true Christian. Amen? Abiding involves your true response to the teaching of Jesus Christ. Question, does everyone who go to church have the Holy Spirit? Yes or no? Does everyone who go to church have the Holy Spirit? You can come to the Bible study, not become a Christian. You go to church every Sunday and not make you a Christian. You become a Christian. How? Everybody read. And if anyone does not have the Spirit of Christ, they do not belong to Christ. Perhaps many people have religion but not have the Spirit of Christ. Perhaps you need to examine yourself whether you have the Spirit of Christ. Think about it. Has your life been transformed? Do you have a desire to study the Bible? How do you think and act like Christ if you don't read the Bible? And if you don't come to the Bible study? In my own life, I attended up to three Bible study a week outside of Sunday service. You know why? In Second Peter 3.18, command us to grow in the grace and knowledge of Jesus Christ. Think about it. 
if you want to change your life, if you want to experience God's power, how do you transform and how to have it? So this is just follow the simple formula. God's word, the Bible, plus the Holy Spirit. You need the Holy Spirit to understand the Bible, plus obedience. What is the result? Transformation and life changing. So, how do you transform your life? God's Word plus Holy Spirit plus obedience resulting in transformation and life changing. And that is the meaning of the Spirit-filled Christian. So, the Spirit-filled Christian is controlled by the Holy Spirit. What does the Holy Spirit, why, when does the Holy Spirit come into your life? And you also were included in Christ when you heard the message of truth, the gospel of your salvation. When you believe, you were marked in him with a seal, the promised Holy Spirit. The moment you believe that Jesus died on the cross for your sin, that he rose again from the dead, the Bible says, when you believe, you mark in him with a seal, the promised Holy Spirit. The day you believe in, G in Jesus as your Lord and Savior is the day the Holy Spirit enter your heart. The problem is this. Just because the Holy Spirit entered your hearts does not mean he is in control. Let me share you. Let me share with you a problem that many Christians don't realize. Why the Holy Spirit may not be in control? <laughs> Brothers and sisters, I could not address you as people who live by the Spirit, but as people who are stilly, still worldly, mere infants in Christ. What Paul is talking about in this passage is frustration and disappointment because the Corinthians are not growing spiritually. There are Christians who are accept the Lord Jesus Christ many years but still spiritually infant. These are the believers who did not grow and remain in spiritual infancy. Notice Paul calls them brothers and sisters or brethren. These people are part of the family of God. They attend Bible study. They go to church, reading, reading the Bible. But the problem they had is even though they have the Holy Spirit, they are not active like spiritual people but worldly people and Paul calls them infant. What is an infant? A baby between the age of about zero to one year of age. Therefore, an infant live on milk. Milk on breakfast, milk for lunch, milk for, for dinner, and everywhere. In this verse, Paul speaks about two categories of Christians. There is the spiritual Christians who knows the word of God and imitating the character of Jesus Christ. And there is the worldly Christian who knows the word of God, yet they are still worldly. This Christian king and according to the flesh and not the spirit. Paul says in verse 2, I give you milk, not solid food. This means Paul taught them the most basic teaching about God because they were babies in the faith. So Paul gave them the most basic thing about God in simple teaching. And, and was easy for them to digest 
a new spot. They were not living any deeper in the basic things. He already preached them. Paul had spent about a year and a half in Corinth preaching a North Corinth church, but this is called a carnal Christians. They are not growing spiritually. This Christian should by now walking in Christ and living according to the Spirit. In, in other words, in order to grow spiritually, you obey what the Bible was saying and you must go teaching about the Word of God. And as you get to know God, He will open up your understanding to more and more of it. If you are obeying scriptures and the voice of the Holy Spirit, God is pleased. God is glorified. Now, the truth is, there are times when you don't like to obey the Holy Spirit. There are times when you like to control your, of your life. I'll show you a picture of a carnal Christian. A carnal Christian who is in charge? Yourself, who is driving. So Jesus promised not to leave you, but you can make him sad because he is not the master of your whole life. <laughs> the carnal Christian is Christ in him, in him, but the self is in control. So how to be controlled by the Holy Spirit? To be controlled by the Holy Spirit, you must understand, you must surrender the way you think, your mind. And then what you think of will now control your emotions. And then after your emotion is controlled, then your action will follow. The Bible commands us in Philippians 4.8, Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy about such thing. The Bible says, whatever is true, whatever is bright, whatever is lovely, let your mind dwell on these things. In other words, you are to control what enters your mind. You are responsible for your thought life. Your mind is everything. And I know whatever gets your mind gets you. So one of the most important things that you need to learn is how to guard and renew your mind. Because the battle of sin always starts in the mind. So if you want to be controlled by the Holy Spirit, what is the requirements? Everybody read. God's word plus Holy Spirit plus obedience. Can we do that? Praise God. Let's bow our head and pray. <coughs> Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. <coughs> if God has spoken to you and you realize that you have not surrendered your life completely to Jesus, if you like to do that today, I want you to stand up and pray with me. God knows your heart. You have been in control of your life, but today you say, Lord, I want to surrender my life. And in fact, I want you to stand up and then you pray this prayer with me. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. May I ask Gani and the team to come and play? And uh, God bless you all.
Thank you, Brother Adrian, for that wonderful message. It, it, it uh, challenged us. So thank you, Holy Spirit. Um, yes, uh, let us all stand up and uh, yeah, let us continue to worship the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Praise your holy name. Sing what you can do. God of wonders, your power has no end. Things you've seen before in greater measure again.
God bless to everyone. And yeah, enjoy the day with the Lord and with your loved ones. Thank you for coming.